There is no judge as relentless as the internet. No matter who you are, it will eventually come for you, and no misdeed will be forgotten. Some people know better than to put their personal lives on display and keep a degree of privacy, while others don't really have a choice. Adam Dahlberg, also known as Sky Does Minecraft, and a dozen other aliases, relinquished his privacy through the things he allegedly did to his ex-girlfriends, his employees, and himself. But there are aspects of this case undercovered by YouTube commentary channels. Where did Sky go after the allegations came out? What are the bizarre videos? on his channel, they make him seem like he's on drugs. Today, Toastify and I are going to go deep into how far Sky Does Minecraft fell from grace. If it weren't for the catastrophic ending Sky's story got, he would probably be one of the most inspiring content creator origin stories, hands down. From being overweight and depressed in the late 2000s, to starting a channel dedicated to playing RuneScape, which, though not very successful, helped him and a few like-minded people online who had a passion for making gaming videos. As his life tentatively improved and he'd shed a lot of weight, those same friends he made on the platform were pivoting to a new game. And Sky followed suit, not knowing said game was Minecraft, which would go on to be the rising tide that raised all ships, including his own channel. By February 2013, Scott as Minecraft hit a million subs and was making over 15 grand a month, placing Sky in a position he was not at all prepared to be in. His immediate reaction was to stick to his guns and continue relying heavily on his friends for his content, collaborating with them very often to make these theatrical videos wherein they would have a story play out. Eventually, these collaborations crystallized into a group called Team Crafted, with whom Sky moved into a house so that they could all do IRL content with each other. To be honest, this is kind of a trailblazer idea, because content houses were all the rage just a little while after. At this point in time, Sky was a part of the YouTube elite. One of the biggest trademarks he left in his wake was the butter phenomenon, in which kids around that time who were also getting into Minecraft were miming one of the memes from his channel, which was to refer to the in-game gold as butter. It's kind of cringe to think about it now, but one of the best metrics of success is whether kids are annoyingly repeating your catchphrases to one another, and that was certainly a metric in which Sky excelled. His success wasn't limited to the confines of the online world either, as he received some degree of mainstream recognition, eventually even participating in a Lady Gaga video. However, the success that Sky enjoyed was very short-lived, since as early as June 2013, his girlfriend at the time, Dawn, broke up with him just four months after their engagement. He eventually admitted he had to pay her $25,000 and a car to get her to stay the last few months for the purposes of making content. And speaking of content, things on that end were also pretty shaky, as the IRL content that Sky and Team Crafted expected to be putting out wasn't coming together whatsoever. The content very quickly was trailing off, and everyone was realizing this was unsustainable as a business model. Conflict very quickly came to a head when one member, Seto, was kicked out for basically being unwilling to show his face and participate fully in the IRL content. Another member, Tai, stood against this and was also excluded. While the haze of the gaming YouTube golden age was a hard one to see through, it became clear that Sky was a much less amiable person than he appeared to be and was willing to drop others without hesitation. Despite by them supposedly being friends. In March 2014, Sky left, citing no reason for his departure, which raised many eyebrows. This is where one of the major chess pieces that would eventually culminate in Sky's total undoing would enter the scene, Alessa. Growing increasingly friendless, Sky decided to reach out to his crush from school, obviously now being in a much more favorable position to impress her than he was during his school years. Alessa replied, informing him that she'd recently broken up with her boyfriend, and without missing a beat, Sky invited her over to the Team Crafted house, no less, which was now vacant, and the two started dating. After attempting to become a variety channel as Minecraft's popularity dwindled and he lost interest in the game, he and Alessa had a child, Mason. Despite the catastrophic failure of Team Crafted, Sky still held his ambitions to become a diversified media company and decided to start Sky Media, which would end up being an even bigger blunder than Team Crafted. As he selected whom he'd hire for Sky Media, he deliberately chose not to hire a former freaking collaborator of his known as Bashaverse, over the fact that Basher had been, as far as I understand it, convicted of an unlawful transaction with a minor under 16, which as defined by law means to encourage, assist or coerce a minor into an illegal activity, which is unspecified in this conviction and it's its own can of worms I don't want to tackle right now. Though it's safe to say that this information being leaked was one of the primary triggers for Bash's ultimate downfall. I just wanted to leave my f***ing room and I was in for years and I finally did and you, you won't leave me alone! Ah! I'm tired of it! 
Very quickly, the company's operations began devolving. According to one of the former members, individual members of Sky Media weren't allowed to run their own channels and had to sell them to Sky, who consequently had the right to do whatever he wanted with them, including retooling people's entire online presence to represent other people, erasing any trace of the original account owner. The person who alleged this, Ross, was also close friends with the editors, and after a tweet was made by one of them criticising other famous YouTubers, Sky interpreted it as a subliminal insult directed at him. Eventually, this conflict erupted, causing Ross and the editors to leave, but not before Sky supposedly threatened to bleed them dry in court if they ever spoke out about it. Soon after, another member of the group, Jinbop, was fired from Sky Media after an argument about Super Smash Bros, and a few months later was arrested for grooming a minor, who at the time was somewhere between 14 and 15. Jinbop was in his 20s. Again, this isn't directly connected to Sky, but it's worth mentioning how everything surrounding Sky Media was rapidly going sour in the most extreme ways imaginable. 2016 rolled around, and things went from being rocky to collapsing at free fall speed. In the latter half of the year, he made a video admitting to having recently spent a week at a mental hospital, being treated for clinical depression and bulimia. Whilst this was purposely kept under wraps, was Sky even directly asking Keemstar not to report on any news regarding the topic, behind the scenes, his relationship with Alessa was crumbling. At this point, she had already cheated on him once, and the two broke up and started having public shouting matches on Twitter. After a six week break in early 2017, Sky resumed posting, and in March, even got back together with Alessa, only to break up again soon after, claiming on Twitter she had cheated on him a second time. Eventually, in an interview Adam did with Keemstar, he claimed Alessa had cheated on him with seven people, five of them being other YouTubers and two of them being his friends. You reckon she, uh, she hopped on the gym, Bob Cobb? On the business side of things, he'd recently been offered an eight figure deal from a corporation to make more Minecraft content on his channel, which is an opportunity very few people have ever been given. However, the money wasn't enough for him to keep his act together and continue working on producing content. And in mid-2017, he made a pivot to becoming a music channel under the name Net Nobody. As you can imagine, his channel's prospects were not looking good, and things were even worse on the personal side of things, since at this point, Adam was no longer allowed to see his son due to the adverse relationship he had with Alessa. Eventually, after a lot of struggle, he managed to get partial custody, but by now, his kid could hardly recognise him. As it stood, this was a tragic story, but few can imagine its next developments. Over the course of the next few years, people had mixed feelings for Sky. On the one hand, many still had positive feelings towards him, seeing him as the once huge Minecraft guy who just had his personal life and mental health issues swallow up everything else. Others saw Sky as the architect of his own downfall, not sympathising with the situation because, after all, he made millions of dollars playing video games and people thought he should be able to get his act together. As the public reeled in from his public conflict with Alessa and his career as a musician failed, he eventually went back to making gaming and Minecraft videos, but they continued to dwindle in success as the years went by. To be honest, he probably could have turned it around even after all of this if he tried to do something different, but still within the same umbrella. But for whatever reason, for him, it was a binary between only doing music and distancing himself completely from his original content, or doing the same old shtick he's always done. For all intents and purposes, his channel, along with every media company he tried running, was dead, with whatever remained being sold off whenever possible, like a carcass being picked apart by vultures. For four years, his online presence quietly languished, until the time came for it to no longer do so quietly. Following his separation from Alessa, Adam dated another girl named Elizabeth, and unlike Alessa, Adam tried to keep her away from the spotlight. A common line of thinking regarding not just Adam and Alessa's relationship, but online relationships in general, is that part of the reason for their downfall is precisely how exposed they are to the public, with the partners potentially being swayed by their opinions. However, there's another side to this coin. Sometimes being exposed to the public is actually keeping things from becoming much worse, as one of the parties in the relationship would behave a lot worse if they knew they wouldn't be held accountable by an audience. If Elizabeth's words are to be trusted, this was definitely the case. In early 2022, she took to Twitter to speak at length about her experience with Adam. This has been covered before, given it took place all the way back in 2022, but there are a few things in this whole story that contextualize all the allegations surrounding Adam's name. Right now, I think it's important for me to disclaim that the following part of this video is composed mostly of allegations that I'm simply documenting and that they get pretty dark in tone, so if you're sensitive to abuse-related topics, beware. The first tweet in the series was a link to an iCloud document in which Elizabeth went in-depth about their relationship. She begins by saying she spent thousands of dollars to come live with him, despite him obviously being someone who, at least was supposed to be, financially well off. As for Elizabeth, Adam claims that his only mental health issues were that he was bipolar and potentially on the spectrum, which she proceeded to claim was a lie. As previously mentioned, there was an active push to keep her and their child, because yes, Adam had a second child with Elizabeth, under wraps. And allegedly not for any noble reason, but because he wanted to have complete power over the narrative over the relationship, in case things ever went sour the same way they did with Alessa. Elizabeth said that Adam pressured her into having that baby, claiming he said things like, please, 
please. I want another kid. I have the money. I want another kid because Alessa keeps me from being the father I dream of. Regardless of her intense resistance to Adam's push to beget a child, she eventually gave in. However, when she informed him that she was pregnant, his reaction was to express a mild contentment. Bringing Adam's allegations that Alessa had cheated on him multiple times back into the light, Elizabeth said, Throughout our relationship, you were always on your phone, always hiding messages, having separate texting apps and deleting conversations. You tried to pressure me into letting you be poly with your friend and degraded me when I told you it's not my thing and I'm not comfortable with that. You just like cheating. You like feeling better than everyone else and you want people to do whatever you say. You not only cheated on me, but you did it several times before I even moved in with you. I found all the conversations, all the emails, everything that showed I was just a trophy to you, just an object on the shelf. There was a very radical shift in gears that made it very difficult for the people who pitied Adam for a situation and still saw Alessa as the villain of their story. Another of his alleged egregious acts was an offer he made of paying Elizabeth a hundred grand so that she would give him their child, despite him no longer having that kind of money at hand for a long time. Concerning his financial situation, Elizabeth added that the aforementioned money that Adam was offered by corporations, in actuality, never completely materialized. You see, they must have been on some kind of payment plan for him to get paid as he did the work he was supposed to, when instead of producing the content, he just spent it on drugs, leaving Elizabeth to scramble for money to pay bills and keep food in their house, all the while being mistreated. For every one of these greater misdeeds of his, there were a number of smaller examples. According to her, he would throw away the food she made him, make her move a 200-pound washing machine while pregnant, repeatedly tell her to get ready for a date night, but then change plans at the last hour and invite his friends over. Some of this is small stuff, and some of it is relatively trivial, but at the time, at least, the fans really believed this. Another pattern that manifests through her account is that despite struggling with mental health issues himself and expecting people to have understanding with him, he'd have no patience with her whenever she was the one having an anxiety attack. This video was brought to you by G Fuel, the world's leading energy drink brand. They sell these little tubs of powder that you can mix with water and then just get going. It's that easy. It's got an amazing taste. It's clean, caffeinated energy that will keep you laser focused while watching skibbity toilet videos all day. And there are 40 servings of this stuff in every single tub. So it's a lot of bang for your buck. And right now for March, it's G Fuel Madness where you can buy one tub and get another one absolutely free. They just sent me this Naruto Sage Mode G Fuel, which is excellent. And I've also got my personal favorite here, blue ice, which is uh, just a great flavor. Mixes with water really well, and like once again, like it tastes great. And the best part about it is there's no crash or jitters after I drink it. Don't be a loser. Buy G Fuel today with my link in the description below and in the top comment so you can get the best powdered energy on the market and so they keep giving me money. I, uh, I like that a lot. Thanks for watching. Back to the video. Notwithstanding, Elizabeth says he not only kept doing hard drugs, despite knowing that they would interfere with his mental health and potentially make him permanently psychotic, but actively pushed for all of his friends to also do them. All of this while sharing a house with a woman who was pregnant with his child, mind you. He refused to stop smoking in the house, claiming it was his and he could do whatever he wanted. When the topic was a lesser, Elizabeth revealed that the whole campaign Adam did to get custody of his son, which included going on drama alert and screaming and crying about how much he wanted his son back was, to put it bluntly, a sham. Elizabeth explained that Adam had her and his mom take care of Mason and bring him back and forth on visits whilst he did next to nothing. Alessa, contrary to what many believed, was described as an amazing mother and the unsung hero of their public spat. Despite how bad things already are by now, Adam's alleged misdeeds extend far beyond being an abusive boyfriend or a negligent father. On the second page of a document, Elizabeth wrote, You also have assaulted and sexually harassed several women, even paid them off with hundreds of thousands of dollars just to protect your perfect little image. You paid a girl to keep quiet years ago because you almost got her pregnant and you didn't care. You sent nudes to young girls. You were extremely unfaithful. As soon as I left, you got with my best friend, who I considered to be like a sister. Over the years, you failed to acknowledge how you'd pay young girls money for their time and attention. Cheating is gross. Alessa loved you, and you would cheat, manipulate, and lie when she'd defend herself. Alessa tried so much to help you. All your girlfriends did. You didn't care. You tried cheating on me with an AI Twitter account. You would tell me how she is the only one that understands you. You would wake people up in the middle of the night to talk about this AI. AI. The next thing she zeroed in on was the consequences of Adam's drug abuse. She described him as acting possessed and doing spiritual talk, even calling it speaking in tongues at one point, which made her very concerned he was becoming psychotic, which was a definite possibility since Adam's psychiatrist had told him years prior that even smoking weed had a significant risk of psychosis for him. Eventually, his sleeping and eating patterns became more erratic, and his demeanor towards her got increasingly aggressive, with Adam being verbally abusive, breaking things around the house, scattering food over the counter and floors, and though I don't quite 
quite get this one, jumping in and out of windows. Does she mean leaping through the glass and breaking in the process, or just jumping through open windows? Either way, very psychotic behaviour. In one instance, Adam is alleged to have locked the dog, Albert, in the kennel, screaming at him, feeding him candy and Gatorade, and for whatever reason, calling him Elon Musk. This may be weird or even funny at first glance, but a very common expression of being severely deranged is randomly bringing up celebrities or historical personalities into your personal life. However, it gets a lot worse. Adam would let Albert outside when it was freezing cold, causing the dog to get lost and nearly freeze to death. Apparently, he did this multiple times. Once, whilst he got manic at Elizabeth, the dog bit him, and Adam's reaction was to drag the animal around by his neck. Apparently, he had a habit of doing this, even surrounding him with mirrors in the kennel at one time because he was nervous, presumably to further disturb the dog. Elizabeth also said that Adam would deliberately clog all the drains, forcing her to have to go to the store to use the bathroom during her pregnancy, which obviously, being pregnant, made her have to go to the bathroom much more often than normal. Adam wouldn't let her shower, eat, or sleep by blasting music and doing schizobabble, and the house was often exposed to the elements as he'd leave doors open during blizzards. Her account as they didn't just terrorise people domestically, but also did it online as well. Adam would be constantly spamming Alessa with demands to see his son, whilst Elizabeth would be texting her, informing her Mason would not be safe, since whenever he was upset, Adam would put him at risk in various ways. Adam would also call up Anne Venom and scream nonsense at him, saying how much he hated him. For context, Anne Venom is one of the few YouTubers who came out the same scene as Adam, but unlike Adam and his peers, he came out relatively unscathed and actually managed to be an extremely successful content creator by doing more technical videos on Minecraft. Obviously, Anne Venom's success was deeply resented by Sky, who completely failed to do the same despite initially having a way bigger channel. More signs of clearly psychotic behaviour include Adam punching an amethyst he had on the wall, and after the resulting gash in his fist had been bandaged, he would purposely take the bandages off and start rubbing his blood on Elizabeth and all over the walls. It's also mentioned in this section, though it's left unspecified if it actually happened in the same time period, but Elizabeth also claims that Adam elbowed her in the stomach multiple times. After being taken to the hospital to get his hand checked against his wishes, Adam became violent and started screaming and kicking Elizabeth in her stomach, proceeding to fight the staff and yell out the N-word. Adam was subdued by security and spent a week in the hospital, but after returning to his house, his behaviour hadn't changed one bit. However, it did change whenever Elizabeth called 911, at which point Adam would act completely normal in front of the police, meaning he wasn't so insane that he was unaware he was being erratic. He could turn it on and off whenever it's convenient for him. There were, at some point, dozens of recordings Elizabeth made of Adam saying he wanted to kill multiple different people, but he forced her to delete them when he found out about it, something that, according to the document, also happened to Alessa. This culminated in Adam getting in her face whilst wielding a knife, and then proceeding to slash one of their roommate's mattresses with it. Unbeknownst to him, whilst this was taking place, Elizabeth was on a call with a police officer, being instructed to act as if she was on a call with someone she knew, so as not to raise any suspicions and attract Adam's attention to her. Once they'd arrived at the scene and Adam noticed there was police presence, he immediately pivoted to pretending he was doing spring cleaning. However, it was very clear to the cops that this was not the case, as the house was in utter shambles, and as they moved in to secure Elizabeth's safety, upon seeing that the officers were talking to her, Adam began getting erratic again, started rambling about God, video games, his son, his rights, and nuclear power to the officer, and was promptly arrested. We'll briefly sidestep the iCloud documents so that we can go over the police reports, which were also made available on the Twitter thread. Adam was charged with malicious mischief of the third degree, specified as damage to private property since he slashed his roommate's mattress and a harassment threat. After being involuntarily committed to the hospital, he was still behaving strangely, saying nonsensical things and resisting whenever the officers wanted him to lie down to keep him from running out of his hospital room and attacking the staff, which fortunately never happened. As Adam spent the next few weeks in the hospital, he continued to frequently call Elizabeth, which according to her, brought her to the brink of almost doing something very drastic. And the only thing that stopped her was the fact that she was going to be a mother. However, none of this phased Adam, who was simply focused on getting out of the hospital as soon as possible. When he did, his behavior resumed, with the added bonus that he began regularly threatening his own well-being to further manipulate Elizabeth into getting whatever he wanted. At a later moment, when Elizabeth was trying to sleep, Adam ran into her room and yanked her out of the bed, at which point she said she felt a tear in the side of her stomach. As soon as he noticed she was screaming out in pain and crying, Adam ran out of the room, almost like a kid after they broke a piece of furniture or something. As a matter of fact, a lot of these behaviors are like a very distorted, psychotic version of things that a kid would do. Something Elizabeth mentions almost immediately when recounting this event is the fact that Adam blew through all of their money on candy and drugs. In the tweets 
that followed, she attached some images of her PayPal, paying back $6,000 and consequently being over negative $6,000 in the checking. Her prolonged episode of being tormented in Adam's hands apparently came to an end when he told her to call her dad. The thing is, when she did, her dad immediately started driving at 2 a.m. to come get her. According to her, when Adam realized he'd overplayed his hand and made a mistake, he began texting everyone they knew to start spreading a narrative that she was a belligerent one, the same way he did Alessa. Even though they were no longer living together, Elizabeth continued to text him, trying to be supportive, but Adam continued to do the same. Two months after her departure, she gave birth in a hospital that was under strict instructions to put the hospital in complete lockdown were Adam to show up. Elizabeth was wise enough to prevent Adam from ever being in the same vicinity as their child if he was unmedicated, but since he continued to not take his meds, he never met his own daughter. While he apparently continued to harass her in private and in public, Adam was repeatedly either threatening to do something drastic himself or pretending he'd already done it. Attached to her statements are a few videos, which she gives context for. This one is explained by Elizabeth as Adam asking for the last $200 she had so that he could buy weed and candy. One of the last things said in the document is that there is another unnamed person who has a restraining order against Adam, but we don't get any further info on that. The other images attached to the tweets show Adam randomly referring to Elizabeth <laughs> using the N-word, based, talking to this aforementioned other girl when he was still with Elizabeth, along with an image of the slashed mattress, forgetting his daughter's due date and demanding to see her once she was born, endlessly spamming Elizabeth with calls in the middle of the night, threatening his own life again to manipulate her, along with a few recordings of the voice messages he left her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't respect you. The fact that she has recordings of his voice honestly gives her account a lot more credence than if she only had text message receipts. But still, as I said, I'm documenting these as allegations and not attesting to their credibility. But if there are elements of her story that you think are dubious, there are two more that really solidify Elizabeth's claims. First off, on the very same day, a former collaborator of Skye's, the British YouTuber Gizzy Gaza, also posted about his experience with him, which is also very long, so I'll give it the same treatment I gave Elizabeth's and paraphrase. It. He does note right at the beginning that he had no concrete evidence for his claims since most of it took place over Skype, and he couldn't manage to find anything archived. Again, I'll have to let you be the judge of their veracity. In his document, Gizzy retells that he was the originator of the idea to make the Cops and Robbers series, in which they recreated a Halo 3 Forge map to do roleplay, and it blew up and became a landmark of early 2010's Minecraft videos. However, after inviting Adam for the second recording of it, the series got away from Gizzy, and eventually, he stopped being invited to them altogether, despite playing a pivotal role in getting it started. This, according to him, was done purposely by Adam, who deliberately misinterpreted Gizzy's claim to be the originator of the map, as if he was saying he did it by himself without the help of Podcrash, the people who built the map under Gizzy's instructions. This permanently made him persona non grata in the Minecraft community. In 2014, Adam actively went around contacting other content creators and told them not to work with Gizzy, effectively a boycott coming from one of the most important gaming YouTubers of that era for seemingly no good reason. Also on the same day, Alessa took to Twitter to clarify her position on the erupting news about Sky, saying, The only time I ever kept our son away was when he didn't have an active parenting plan set up to ensure I'd get him back after visitations. Instead of waiting for the parenting plan, Adam let Keemstar manipulate him into having a breakdown on drama alert. To this day, Adam blames me for the drama alert thing. Since we're digging up old news, I remember the time Adam wrote a love song for another girl and played it for our co-workers in front of me. My co-workers were like, "Oh, it's so sweet he made a song about you. I had to make it awkward and admit it wasn't about me. Then I got harassed about it for days, saying I embarrassed him in front of his employees and how immature I was being, constantly gaslighting me. And the song was for a girl he was cheating on me with, by the way. He also let her borrow my car without asking. When Don, his older ex, and I came together to write an affidavit against him, he bribed her by giving her the pit bull from their relationship in an attempt to quiet her and discredit everything I was saying. Like I said, he uses people and animals for his own gain. Adam likes to call me an abuser for finally retaliating at him physically after he had been chasing me around and cornering me. I lashed out after he screamed in my face that he would do everything in my power to make sure the court sees you as an unfit mother. He wouldn't move, so I grabbed his neck and punched him. And honestly, I regret nothing, and he cannot hold that over my head anymore. The sad part is, when the cops came, I didn't tell them about him physically restraining me or screaming at me. I was scared the public would find out, thus making him lose his job, thus leaving my son with no support as I didn't have a job at the time. I spent my son's first Easter in jail because he wouldn't send money to his parents to help bail me out. I sat there for five days. Then he tried to dox me with this information to his millions of followers to get them to mob me. At about six months pregnant,
opinion, Adam took my car keys, my phone, my laptop, and left me in our house with no food until they came back home at around 11 p.m. The lake house was miles away from any grocery store or restaurant, otherwise I would have walked. And even if I found somewhere to purchase food, I had no money of my own. I was financially held hostage anytime I disagreed with him. Adam isolated me from my friends and family. I had no one to call, and my father was in Mexico. I had no money of my own because Adam was supporting me because I had recently given birth to our son and I wasn't working. And since everyone's been asking, yes, they are also the reason I no longer have access to my old YouTube channel. Later on, Alessa shared a message she allegedly got from Adam's mother, which read, what is the end result you're looking for here? Adam forced to work a menial job like 7-Eleven or McDonald's? Well, prepare for $25 a month of child support. DSHS will lower the payments to what he'll be able to pay. You'll have to get a job. You destroyed his singing career. Now you've wrecked his life and livelihood. You accuse him of the worst crimes via vigilante justice. No defense, no judge, no jury. Just an angry mob who doesn't really know what went on. But I was there for your bad actions as well as his. Grow up and stop using the angry mob to feel better. It's interesting to me that the first thing expressed in her message is the idea of Adam working a regular job and how horrible that would be, trying to make it about the child supports, and willingly ignoring the fact that at this point, Alessa already had a job and was supporting Mason on her own income. While the image we got of Adam's mom from Elizabeth was a more positive one, if this message she sent Alessa is genuine, it may be the case that her motivation for helping Adam's victims out is so that it never gets so bad that Adam does something that lands him in prison, basically cleaning up after him while simultaneously enabling. Of course, this is just speculation based on Alessa and Elizabeth's claims. User Munching Brotato quote tweeted Alessa, saying he was with Adam and Alessa back in 2015 and witnessed him berating her, telling her he would have to delete all of her social media in the middle of a flight. In reply to his post, user Terpy Clouds also attested to having witnessed Adam throwing objects, including ones made out of glass, at Alessa in a hotel room while she was pregnant, causing thousands of dollars worth of damage, and most importantly, endangering his own kid's life in the process. This was back in 2014, and there were pictures from the trip they attached to the tweet. Along with Alessa, Ross, who worked at Sky Media, also made some tweets, revealing that Sky would only let him have his channel back for $100,000, and when Ross refused that generous offer, it made him angry. He also showed some prints of conversations wherein Adam was trying to pressure him into doing things at the office that he didn't agree to. Another person who came out against Sky was someone named Brian, who mentioned he'd made a tweet longer two years prior about some assault situations he had suffered, which included a story about Sky, though he hadn't named him in the original post. The story described him going to Las Vegas and attending a karaoke with Sky, who got very intoxicated and at one point tried to non-consensually kiss him. In his tweets, he elaborated, saying, Back in 2016, Adam called me to tell me that he wanted me to move out to Seattle to become a huge brand new YouTuber, make me the next big thing. Time had passed and I was told I was going to get a call with his manager at the time to talk specifics, but nothing came from it. Then we ended up at PAX South 2017, where I asked Adam at a house party what was going on, and he said he would get me answers next week when he got back. After a week, still nothing. Eventually I started to hear rumours from friends that Adam would talk behind my back, tell people how shit my content was, and that I was someone who was just looking to leech off people, which wasn't true at all. All I wanted was to be Adam's friend. Anytime he's in some sort of funk, I would reach out to him to see how he was doing, and if he needed anything. I was always there for him. Then things started to change when Alessa and Adam broke up. I considered them both friends, but Adam didn't like that I was still friends with Alessa afterward, even though she never did anything bad towards me, and I was just being a good friend to them both. I started to notice that he changed his way with me, and one day I tweeted a subtweet then deleted it, and then he DM'd me about what it was, just because I was friends with Alessa. Brian included a few screenshots of the DMs, mostly consisting of Adam pressing him about the subtweet and saying he doesn't trust Brian because he still followed Alessa. Another similar story to Brian's came from a VTuber named Ender, who moved in with Adam around the same time as Elizabeth. According to Ender, Adam made false promises and put as much pressure as he could on Ender to move in, only for none of them to be fulfilled. Other former associates of Sky were coming out of the woodwork to support them, one of them being Deadlocks, who said in no vague terms that no one actually liked Adam as much as they feared him, and that he lost 99% of his friends through his career because of the way he behaved. The aforementioned Munching Brotato also shared that Adam bullied him out of the platform, and after enough time passed since it had happened and Brotato thought it was safe to come back, Adam immediately noticed and released private DMs between them, calling on his legion of fans to antagonise him. Seto Sorcerer suggested that Adam had something to do with his departure from YouTube in 2014. Battlesword added that Adam would lie, manipulate, cheat, and emotionally destroy anyone who wasn't perfect to him. A user named Z showed DMs between themselves and Adam, wherein he could be seen threatening himself. Tim.TV alleged that when the Jim Bob situation was still ongoing, he brought it up to Adam, who told him to mind his own business and edit. Miss San corroborated this by saying that when Jin was arrested, Adam told everyone not to say anything about it so that he could play dumb about it. Later on, Miss San also dropped his statement, revealing that he regularly worked 15 hours a day for Sky, and once he quit, he instantly started tweeting out a bunch of lies about him, vilifying him and resulting in Sky's fans following suit and harassing Miss San, which culminated in him distancing 
editing himself from creating content and just becoming an editor for somebody else. The insane work hours aren't just Missan's claims either. Another user by the name of Sub also relayed that he was working not 15, but 20 hours a day when he was just 15 years old. Six videos and six thumbnails per day, plus two animation videos a month. And being so devoted to his work under Sky that he convinced his parents to potentially relocate so that he could continue working. However, after a while of Sub basically running Sky's channel, he was unceremoniously let go, which absolutely crushed him. Fortunately, he quickly came to realise this was a blessing in disguise, as his working conditions were absolutely exploitative. Especially since, if I'm understanding this correctly, Sky was telling him he couldn't afford to pay him, despite raking in millions on his main channel at the time. A very similar story came from someone named Queen Cat, who reported being 13 to 14 years old when they were editing the Do Not Laugh videos for Adam, again, for no pay at all. Sky's way of repaying the labour was to promise to put their names in the description, which is already pathetic in and of itself, but even then, he wasn't able to fulfil his promise. After repeatedly complaining to Sky about it, he replied that he would shout their name out in another video, which again, never happened. A lot like Substory, it crushed them to see their work, which they were only able to do by sacrificing time in school and with their friends, going completely without meaningful credit. A day after Elizabeth's original tweet, Anne Venom came out on Twitter to share his own experience with him. This wasn't a stranger or an ex-girlfriend, but someone who'd worked with him at a point in time, giving a lot of weight to his words. In his pastebin post titled, Adam doesn't deserve a forgiveness, but I still hope he tries to earn it, he said, I want to preface this by saying that ever since 2013, I've been kept just outside of arm's reach of Adam, so I was spared from much of what you may have heard from others. I've known Adam, also known as Scott as Minecraft, also known as Net Nobody, since 2009, prior to the creation of the Scott as Minecraft channel. I was there when Adam was trying to get his channel off the ground, and I coached him a lot throughout 2012, which is when the Scott as Minecraft channel initially blew up. I met Sky when he contacted me, joking about a RuneScape video I had made. I can't say we were the closest of friends, but we communicated often all the way through 2012. Myself and Caveman Films even did a fundraiser livestream for him in 2011, link below, so he could buy a new PC, which he ultimately did, and that allowed him to start his Scott as Minecraft career. I would be lying if I said I hadn't felt at least a little bit of guilt and feeling like I had ever helped Adam, like this may have never happened. In the weeks leading up to his channel blowing up, he would often ask me to record with him as it was something we enjoyed. By this point, I had somewhere in the neighborhood of 500,000 subscribers. As time went on, he would ask to record with me a lot because he enjoyed it, and I enjoyed it. I was a hard ass on him about his repeated requests in early July of 2012 because he began asking me to record a little too much. At the end of the day, part of my motivation for being a hard ass was to motivate him. By the time the middle of July had rolled around, he did just that, and we recorded Minecraft Tennis. I firmly believe Adam would have blown up without my assistance at this point, but Adam definitely blew up a lot following the release of this video. And I mean a lot. He went from tens of thousands of views per day to the high hundreds of thousands. I have archived Skype screenshots from 2012 that I looked at yesterday that showed just how excited Sky was. Sky saw nearly overnight success. Some of you may know, earned income on YouTube isn't paid until 30 to 60 days following the end of that month. So while Sky did see overnight success, he did not get any money for it for a few months. I firmly believe that July through August of 2012 were the absolute happiest I ever saw Adam. Within my PAX 2012 day one video, link below, you can see an entirely different looking Adam, who looks so full of life and so ready to just take on the world. He had found success, but money had not yet corrupted him. My memory after PAX 2012 is hazy, but I do remember the first time our friendship became strained was when he organized and did not invite me to Survival Games 5, the video for which is linked below. Considering that I won the first three, and considering how good of friends we were prior to this time, something seemed up. Now I want to make clear that this is water under the bridge. I forgave this a long time ago. The reason I bring this up is this is when I began to always be greater than an arm's distance away from Adam, which is why I feel I was spared. In the years following, I heard I was in discussions to be invited into Team Crafted, but later heard Adam struck down that idea. Again, it seems I was spared. The last time I can ever recall seeing him in person was when he was working at Sky Media and we had lunch together. Fast forward to some time into and after 2018, I began to see just how far Adam had fallen. I need to be extremely careful not to disclose specifics, but Adam called me as a friend to discuss the delusional ideas that he was completely enthralled with. At some point in 2019 or 2020, I had gotten a few calls from Adam wherein he was clearly not in a good state of mind. His home was an absolute wreck and he was frequently in some kind of psychotic state. I can confidently say that I was scared during these calls. I was scared that I would be the trigger for him to do something bad, even though all I wanted to do was support him and calm him down. Adam has been my friend since 2009. Even if I felt the odds were absolutely stacked against him, I always wanted him to have an epic comeback, find peace, and live happily. But again, because I was kept just outside of arm's reach, I had no idea about the things that were going on that Liz described within her message. All I can confidently say is that me and Liz did speak the one time she mentioned we spoke, and it was very brief. The last time myself and Adam spoke was within the last few months, when he borrowed a bit of grocery money from me, which he did two or three times within the past year. Now, 
nothing overly major, as I would have said no to anything I wasn't comfortable with. The last time he borrowed from me, though, I told him it was the last time I could help him financially unless he was able to pay it back and have an amazing comeback, whether it be with videos, music, or whatever his life passions were. I just wanted the best for my friend, and I still want the best for my friend. Adam did some truly unforgivable things that other people have shared their stories about, and he's especially done unforgivable things within the past few years, which I believe were directly influenced by him losing the remainder of his earned wealth. I will only consider some kind of forgiveness if he does what I think nobody expects from him at this point and actually strives to fix his life, and then does so and proves to even the harshest of skeptics that he's giving it his all. While Aunt Venom was unable to corroborate many of Elizabeth's more specific claims due to his distance, he was able to confirm one of the most scathing ones, the psychotic phone calls. However, he wouldn't be the last person to follow Elizabeth's lead, as yet another day later, a third person spoke out, identifying themselves as Nick at the end of the twit longer they made about Adam. It reads as follows. My history with Adam begins in the middle of 2017, after reaching out to members of Team Crafted slash Nobody Media in hopes of gaining some experience in the film world while also helping out one of my childhood idols. Until this point, I had not met or seen Adam in the three to four months I'd been visiting the house members, until one night, I was not supposed to have gone back after the shoot. I left my bag inside Adam's bathroom, but was told it would be better to leave it there. The general consensus was that Adam could not see me or he would be very, very upset. Tensions rose as Adam walked down the driveway in a robe and greeted me by name. He handed me his drink and asked if I wanted to sip while gesturing me towards the house. Phil and Jason were immediately worried about me, but I told them he was awesome and had no clue why they tried to protect me from such a nice guy. This is where the manipulation began. Three months after meeting Adam face to face, he began interacting with me on a mutual level on social media, even inviting me to his birthday party, where I was able to meet almost everyone I grew up watching on the YouTube scene. At this point, he was with a girl named Felicia and spent a lot of time away from LA for business. In 2018, Adam entered a very bad time. I was able to come over less, and when I did, he was in his studio off copious amounts of mushrooms, room hotbox so effectively you were high upon even entering. In 2020, he had asked me to come visit to help him get out of his slump, and I obliged. But I didn't feel all the way safe being alone with him after seeing the way he behaved on Discord, so I took one of my close friends who Adam enjoyed the company of with me. Upon being picked up from the airport, we noticed the state of his house was that of an extremely distressed individual. We stayed for a week, taking him grocery shopping, taking care of the puppy, and handling some of the household chores that had been neglected for some time. Adam began opening up to me about what had happened in the past two years and the dark place he had been stuck in for quite some time. He spoke frequently about spiritual adventures, where either he was God or possessed some type of power the rest of us didn't. I helped restore the house back to a livable condition before a week came to an end. Adam became a lot more comfortable sharing things I've never heard about him from his private life and expressed wanting me to stay with him longer so we could continue to get better. The week soon came to an end and Adam begged me to stay. Fortunately, the friends that I had brought had to return home and could not do so without me, so we headed back. The month after this, he would call me at random hours of the night, saying extremely cryptic riddles but never explaining what he meant before threatening himself in some fashion, then disappearing for days at a time only to apologize and say he was working. He finally ends up admitting he took what he claims was upwards of 70 grams of shrooms and that's why he was having such a bad episode. I flew back to Seattle, alone, this time to see Adam and help him with a music video for a song he had shown me. Liz picks me up from the airport and brings me to Adam's house. Liz would soon have to leave and she and I exchanged info before she headed home. Adam immediately was less tense and when I asked who she was, he referred to her as some Tinder girl, but I don't ever see her being my girlfriend. The fucked up part being Liz would have already been pregnant at this point. The week continued with me having to take care of Adam as he slipped in and out of reality, often severely injuring himself in the process. He needed me beside him to bathe because he was afraid of drowning. He'd speak like a baby mumbling nonsense, shower, and walk around with only a blanket refusing to put clothes on until falling into bed next to me. Yelling at construction workers across the street, calling them smiths, all the while constructing some master plan to get Mason back. There's no way a child could live there. The house would get worse as I tried to clean it, and I felt myself being pulled further and further into a hole I didn't know the depth of. I finally went home and began to see the events of what was hidden from me unfold, beginning with the birth of Elizabeth's kid. I kept Adam added, and he would reach out randomly throughout the year with strange requests, like to Adam on Facebook and work on videos. He's since pretended to move on and try to surround himself with new shields to defend the character he presents now versus the one who disregarded so many of the people he claimed to love. Adam is a lying, manipulative narcissist who should not be in a position of power, and I'd warn against trying to help. No matter how much I want to see the good in him, people need to be aware of what type of man he is. To this day, he will repeat, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it, and threaten himself at the first thought of repercussions for his actions. I'm sorry, but I, I can't be responsible for you. Also on the 24th, a user named Skelly posted another twit longer, explaining that Adam had been essentially trying to love bomb and manipulate him, only to have him come over and take care of Mason for him while he went to his bedroom. Skelly also corroborated Elizabeth's claims that Adam abused their dog Albert, feeding it things it shouldn't eat, throwing it outside whilst it rained, among other things. According to Skelly, 
Sky had everyone around him do everything for him, from waking him up to scheduling his activities, contacting business opportunities, and coordinating collaborations for him. Adam would do shrooms every single day, lie about quitting to get things he wanted, tell people about his hallucinations as if they were real and call them stupid if they didn't play along, make non-consensual advances on people around him whilst under the influence, video call people in his underpants or naked, call himself God, demonise anyone who he thought wronged him or are no longer in his life, show people pictures of his semen, guilt trip Skelly into naming his son Adam, and after all of that, never pay him a dime for his work. With all these testimonies coming out in a row, both from people who worked with him and people who were part of his personal life in one way or another, Adam was painted as a pretty calculating abuser, as opposed to the image that the general public had of him, of a guy struggling with mental health who couldn't get a break. Following this close set sequence of allegations, Sky went close to radio silent on these topics, which puzzled a lot of people since some of the claims made, particularly by Elizabeth, crossed well over into criminal territory, and if she was lying, he could easily sue her for defamation. Again, whilst these are just allegations, Elizabeth shared reports from two different police officers who reported Adam was not only belligerent, but possessed by manic delusions, so whatever response he could give would have to be extremely good, otherwise it would do nothing but fuel the fire burning on his name at the time. Liz herself posted the DM which Adam sent to Drama Alert, claiming that the allegations were a mix in regards to their veracity, but besides that measly response, nothing really materialised. February went by, then March, April, and nothing of significance came from him besides a page on Fameswap, wherein it appears that Sky had just put his channel up for sale for nearly a million dollars, which as far as I can tell, never happened. In that same month of April, another of Sky's exes, Dawn, tweeted something in response to the Jay Aubrey video that had recently come out about the allegations. She revealed that all the way back in 2012, before he was as huge as he would soon become, Sky was already abusive, as during play fighting, he put her in a real headlock, which didn't allow her to breathe until she was rendered unconscious. After she woke up, Adam expressed that he didn't intend for that to happen, but I don't know how realistically it's possible to choke someone out on accident, especially when they're clawing and biting at you to stop, as Dawn describes herself doing. Still, nothing from Sky's end. Sky waited for almost a year and a half before speaking about the allegations, and by the time he did, many people had long lost their interest in this case since it was inactive. In July 2023, he took to Twitter to attempt to clear his name, saying, After two and a half-ish years focusing on my mental health, taking in what everyone said and thinks and trying to process, I just want to say I'm sorry anyone ever felt so negatively of me. I make mistakes, but only ever try to be a good person. After speaking with professionals leaked beyond me, I think it's in everyone's best interest to let them handle everything in the personal realms of life. That's what they've dedicated their lives to. After all, I only know my life. I have no amends making plans or happy ending ideas in my head with anyone, and I think it's best to everyone just moves on with their own lives. As has been stated, I was just always an emotional guy trying to help others, make others laugh, and along the way, lost focus. Just as you only know your life and one perspective in that life, I only know mine. I'm not the horrible monster I've been made out to be. It hurts, and it's a lot of what it's taking time to process. I've laughed, cried, put emotions and resources and more to a lot of the very people describing me as a horrible person over mistakes resolved already, and already in the process of healing. It's just all been very confusing, and I'm not asking for sympathy, just understanding whilst I continue to work through it all. I'm not really interested in being Sky anymore or a YouTuber, but rather just a human being, focusing on improvement, creating things behind the scenes, once in a while telling you what I'm working on, and maybe some music once in a while, as it's therapy to me and my wife. I have been doing okay for those who are interested. I'm married to my wife Wendy, making an album, shooting music videos with her, and have grown past internet drama, and things that lower my connections to God and higher frequency, as we get closer to awakening as a species, the end times, the solar flash, etc, whatever you want to call it. I don't focus too much on the internet anymore due to spiritual beliefs, but I do know you're all out there who've supported me and just wanted me to get better. I just wanted to say to those of you who wanted me to get back to a space I was at before, I appreciate you, and saw the redemption stories you all wanted for me so much. I'm off drugs, I'm eating healthy, and really alchemically focusing on my mind and my body. Thank you to those of you who just wanted to better me, I saw it. I just personally hit a point of pressure. I never wanted to be some perfect non-human idea of everyone's old hero. Those were confusing and left me in a weird spot of never knowing how to come out and say, guys, I'm just a guy who makes funny videos, employed friends which cause emotions to be included, has a booming ass voice and viper tongue, and makes just as many mistakes as you during the process of learning and life. I've been living in acceptance of my bipolar schizophrenia over the last two years, and my wife Wendy has helped a lot, but it took a long time for me to understand what was happening to me as it developed over the past five years. Thankfully, I'm in a place where I feel comfortable enough to let everyone in again, and hopefully look to the future. I'm excited to show you the things I've been working on behind the scenes, I'm not really interested in talking about anything negative anymore, and to those of you who were there for me during my lowest, thank you.
Again, what we're seeing here is a discrepancy between Adam's self-perception as a regular guy struggling with serious mental health issues and how he's described by third parties as a manic manipulator and abuser. While this tweet sort of explains why he hasn't defended himself from the accusations in any way, because he's not interested in things he considers negative, it doesn't really do anything to clear up what way exactly he isn't the monster he's been painted to be. A couple of months after this statement was posted to Twitter, he posted a video to his channel called Where Have You Been, wherein he vaguely reiterates some of his statement while wearing religious symbols and then tells people to join a telegram to stay updated. A little while after, he posted another update to his YouTube where he appeared with his new wife and announced that he was now the COO of Storyfire. If you don't know what Storyfire is, it's basically this YouTube, Twitch, alternative platform that was launched a few years ago. It never really went anywhere. And by the way, it was created by uh, McJuggernuggets. That is extra. You're not, you're not, you're not touching this. You're not taking away foot of What are you say, me? What are you While Adam doesn't seem psychotic, something still feels off about the things Sky is saying and his presentation. It's almost as if he's holding on to some phantom of himself of early 2010s Minecraft YouTube humor, but in a very decrepit form. Throughout the video, he mentions there's going to be a documentary release covering the last three years of his life and that he's been saved by Jesus Christ. Over the course of the following months, he started uploading Minecraft videos again, and I should note, not in a new format that makes an attempt to capitalize on how the platform has changed since 2013, but the exact same way he used to do it 10 years ago. As you can imagine, this wasn't very successful, and the shilling for Storyfire definitely didn't help with popularity, since at this point, Storyfire's public reception was pretty negative after CoffeeZilla, someone who's widely trusted by YouTube audiences, did a video covering a publicity stunt one of its founders, Jesse, did to save his platform from completely dying. After a few attempts at recreating these 2013 Minecraft videos, Sky tried his hand at reacting to the recently released GTA trailer with some of his friends, maybe due to it being trending at the time. That was the penultimate video he uploaded to his YouTube YouTube, as his next three uploads were Storyfire exclusives, one being an Animal Crossing gameplay, a LEGO Fortnite video, and a music video for one of his Net Nobody tracks. Another thing he mentioned along with the documentary was the Net Nobody album he supposedly had been working on that would save the world but never got released. While there's very little activity on the content side of things, he's remained active on Twitter, similarly schizo posting with an occasional normal tweet. More important than his account, in my opinion, is his new wife's, not because of her posts, but because of her bio. Right after Adam's name, she has skits Asperger, possibly meaning she's schizophrenic and has Asperger's or something. Although maybe it's just a joke. I mean, it easily could be. However, soon after, it also mentions she's a mother of two. If it's true that she has two kids, I hope from the bottom of my heart that her and Adam's mental health issues are and continue to be squarely under control. Time will eventually tell whether that's the case or not, but honestly, as even the people who made the post containing the allegations about Adam said, there's no good reason to hope for Adam to get worse. Everyone wants him to improve as a person. Evidence of this is that, even after all been said, his comments and replies are full of supportive messages, many of which come from people who actually believe the allegations. At the end of the day, nobody wants to see one of their favorite content creators, one of the people who defined their childhood and defined YouTube in the early 2010s in a state of doing horrible things to himself and others. The stakes are pretty high here, so we have even more motivation to hope no domestic incident ever happens again. But if it does, you can be sure that I'll be talking about it. I've been Turkey Tom, thanks for watching, and until next time huge shout out to Toastify who helped me out with this video. He's one of the best up and coming commentary channels right now and if you guys like my stuff, you should 1000% subscribe to him because he's putting out bangers consistently. Um, I think that's all. Leave me alone.